Hello there, and welcome to this week's Sunday Musings, where every week I talk about something that's on my mind. I also write a weekly blog hosted on Medium. The link's right here. If you want to simplify your life, you can subscribe to me there, and you'll get a notification with a video and the written blog every week something new drops. You can also wait till the end of the video, and my calendar link is there, and I would love to have a conversation, so find a time that works for you, and let's chat. This week is time for another book discussion, and it's about Brene Brown's book, The Power of Vulnerability. It's really only available on audiobook. Um, Audible has it. There is a loose leaf version that you can get, but it was really designed as a couple day class or lecture. And I've got something to confess. I was supposed to write this one up several months ago when I first listened to it. And there's my hint. I keep listening to this over and over. There is so much to unpack in the six or seven hours of the book. I've listened to sections all over. I've listened to the whole book multiple times and I keep finding new nuggets. So I'm not quite sure the best way to summarize it. But if you check on Medium, I have a link to her 20 minute TED talk on vulnerability. She did, I think it was back in 2012. Uh, it gives you a hint and a flavor. But I really do recommend you consider getting the book on tape or the Audible and listen to it because there's just so much there. Every time I listen, I hear something new. I was first introduced to Brene Brown, oh, a while back when she did a TED talk on shame. I was so amazed and astounded that somebody would talk about shame, something that I think if we're really honest with ourselves, we all struggle with. And vulnerability, while it sounds like a different topic, really is sort of looking at shame in a different view or fear. Vulnerability is amazing and, and challenging. It's one of the hardest and most scary things we can do, but it takes a very strong person to do it to be vulnerable, to let people see those things that concern you, that you fear, where you're not perfect. That's kind of difficult for many of us, where we walk around with armor and even a different face than the face we see when we look in the mirror, where we're hiding behind something, whatever that something is. It takes strength to shrug off that costume and let your authentic, true self, mistakes and pockmarks and fears and things you're not good at, all just be there. So I wasn't sure what to write and I got frozen in one of the other things that happens in vulnerability, which is perfectionism. Because I wanted to write the best, most amazing discussion of the book so that all of you would run out and get it. And I kept adding more and thinking time and I started writing and honestly, I think it would have been an entire book in and of itself. And instead what I'm going to do is bring the five or six truths that impacted me in the last time I read the book and just share those with you and encourage you to read and share with me your discussion. I don't think I could ever stop talking about this. In fact, I think that this book is gonna stay on my Audible for the long haul and be something that I revisit probably at least a couple times a year, especially if I find that I'm struggling because it really did resonate and it made me do a lot of self-reflection and self-evaluation. So I've already talked about the first takeaway, which is being vulnerable is hard, but reminding myself and reminding you that if you're vulnerable, you're actually a very strong person. It's not weak. Vulnerability comes from strength. And in order to be vulnerable, you have to understand that you need to be authentic and let others truly see you. Even if it's that you that rolls out of bed with hair flying six ways to Sunday 
and clothes all wrinkled and no makeup or your hair is just in a million ways and your breath isn't the best, but that's who you are. Unadulterated and who you are at your core. In order to feel strong and to be comfortable, as comfortable as you ever will be, and that won't always be 100% in being vulnerable, you need to build up some inner strength in yourself. And you need to find things that you are joyful about, inspired about, that really get you going. And to in do that, to embrace joy, to find joy, you need to practice gratitude. Also, practicing gratitude can help you push away those things that scare you, the monsters in the closet, the horrible dialogue of bad things that you have done or that you think you've done or mistakes you've made. When that dialogue starts running, just say stop and think about the things that are going well, that you're grateful for, and embrace gratitude and have an active study of gratitude so that you can really truly be present and enjoy what's happening and feel joyful in the vulnerability and what you can gain from that. You need to learn to trust who you are and believe that you're enough, just as you are. Mistakes and things you excel at. And that also can come out of gratitude and joy. But to be your authentic self, you have to believe, or at least fake until you make it, that you are enough and that you are a good person. You have to trust yourself. You cannot trust others with your vulnerability until you trust yourself in being vulnerable, even if the only person you're currently being vulnerable with is yourself. You can practice vulnerability in the mirror. Don't lie or hide from yourself. Be authentic there. Then be authentic with one or two good friends or your partner or your children. And then slowly build a practice of vulnerability. And finally, own your mistakes. We all make them. None of us are perfect at everything. We might come very close in one or two things, but own your mistakes and learn from them and enjoy the adventure of gaining new information and new knowledge. And understand that when you make mistakes, intentional or accidental, that what you do impacts the world around you and own the impact that you've made, good and bad. If you do something well, it impacts the world, but it may not impact everyone equally. So understand that everything you do is a ripple in the water, and that ripple moves out and touches many other people and things. Acknowledge that you are not a silo, you are not isolated, you are part of a larger structure and ecosystem, and everything you do, for the good or for the bad, impacts others, so own your actions. Those are just the five quick takeaways after listening to this, I think three or four times now in the last couple months. And I'd love to hear from you what your thoughts are and what your takeaways are. I know that there are many things after finally listening to this, um, after my sister nudged me to do so, that I will be incorporating into my coming days. And so you might see a few of those in upcoming Sunday Musings. Look forward to having a conversation with you. Stay safe. And until next week, I'll speak with you soon.